Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Panacea's Tech Seas channel. Today, we will be taking a close look at two of the most popular GPU overclocking applications currently out on the market, MSI's Afterburner and Gigabyte's Aorus Engine. When I first started overclocking many years ago, there was a lot of conflicting information as to what was the best way to overclock your GPU. And this naturally led me to questions, such as, if I had an MSI graphics card, could I use the Aorus engine to overclock it? Or, if I had an EVGA GPU, would MSI Afterburner work in overclocking that card? What was the best overclocking utility to overclock my GPU? And which application would give me the best overclock performance? Does one application consume more background resources than the other? And so on, you get the idea. So through this video, it's my hope to answer some of these questions. If you're considering what application to use for overclocking your card between MSI's Afterburner and the Gigabyte's Aorus Engine, well then hopefully this video can help answer some of those questions for you. All right, so before we move on to the good stuff, I just wanted to go ahead and state the hardware that we're gonna be using on our testing unit. We're gonna be doing all of our tests on a Gigabyte RTX 2080 WinForce model. We're using an Intel i7 8700 CPU with no overclock. Total of 32 gigabytes of a Corsair DDR4 RAM, a Hydro Series liquid cooler, a 650 watt Rosewell power supply, one terabyte M.2 NVMe uh, SSD drive, and a total of six Corsair 120 ml cooling fans throughout our testing case. So the first thing that we wanted to test was performance. Does one application give you an increase in FPS frames per second over the other application? So to test this, we went ahead and we set a particular overclocking profile first on MSI's Afterburner, and then we ran three different benchmarks, Heaven Benchmark, Unengine Superposition, and GFX Benchmark. We then set the exact same overclocking profiles on Gigabyte's Aorus Engine and ran the exact same test. And what you see here are the results that we got. Regardless of which application we were using, we got almost the exact average FPS on both applications. So. It's good to know here that regardless of which application you decide to use for your overclocking needs, you shouldn't see any difference in performance between using Afterburner or the Aorus Engine. The next thing that we wanted to look at was the CPU load of each application. This is to say, which of these two applications uses the least amount of your CPU while running in the background during a gaming session? Using the identical overclocking profiles, we once again ran a number of different benchmarks, but this time we were only monitoring the application's CPU utilization. The results I have on the screen indicate on average less than 1% of CPU load being used by either application. But as we mentioned prior, these tests were ran on a much newer 8th generation Intel processor. If you happen to be running an older or a slower processor, these numbers could be significantly higher. Now a quick side note here before I move on that I believe is worth mentioning. When initially launching Gigabyte's Aorus Engine, we did see a huge spike in CPU consumption. In the beginning, the application would consume up to 25%, but it would only last for about 10 seconds or so and then we would see the CPU utilization drop back down to the figures that you've seen on this chart. Overall, we did find that MSI's Afterburner consumes slightly less CPU than the Aorus engine, but the difference was nowhere near big enough to make it a deal breaker. Next, we ran the exact same test that we did for CPU load, but this time we monitored the application's average memory consumption. We wanted to know how much RAM both MSI's Afterburner and Gigabyte's Aorus Engine were using while running in the background during a gaming session. As you can see in the chart above, we called this one a tie. 
both applications consume a tiny, tiny amount of RAM while running in the background that never even exceeded 30 megabytes. Given that the average computer and laptop nowadays have at least 8 gigabytes of memory, neither application will make a dent in that. So, so far we've covered performance between both overclocking utilities. We compared the amount of CPU and memory background usage, and for the most part, our tests show that both programs provide about the same performance benefits. So the last thing that we wanted to discuss was the overall user experience and we decided to break this down into three different categories. User interface and ease of use, software reliability, and third, features and customization. When we looked at the user interface and ease of use of both applications, we believe it really comes down to personal preference. Both applications have a simple and easy to use interface. The location of different functions on the main UI seems to be pretty user intuitive. Both provide a wealth of information, which allows you, the user, to figure out how to move around in the overclocking application without the need for a full blown tutorial. However, once you start getting into the settings of each, MSI Afterburner can get a bit complicated especially for the Novus Overclocker. It provides a ton of additional information. MSI Afterburner also allows you a feature to change the look of your Afterburner's UI. It's a feature that the Aorus engine does not offer. So if this is something that's important to you, then clearly you would want to check out MSI Afterburner. In terms of reliability, we had the chance to run both of these programs probably about a hundred times each. So we were really able to get an idea of how laggy one or the other could be uh, and, and whether they were prone to uh, crashes or, or any other problems like that. In this category, MSI Afterburner is significantly ahead of Gigabyte's Orse engine. We found that the Orse engine would frequently crash at times, it would take up to 15 or even 20 seconds to load the application from start. Also, we noticed that any time that we would adjust our overclock settings on the Aorus engine and then click apply, we got a consistent lag, which lasted around 5 seconds and other times would simply force close the application altogether. In contrast, MSI Afterburner did not crash once. It had little to no load time when we opened it, and when applying a new overclock, we got no lag whatsoever. So MSI Afterburner certainly takes the win as it comes to software reliability. Lastly, as to features and customization, we found that even though Gigabyte's Source Engine serves its purpose, which is to provide everything that you need to overclock your GPU, as well as the ability to monitor certain aspects of your card in the background, such as GPU temp, memory usage, and other things. On the other side of the coin, MSI's Afterburner also provided all of the features that came with Gigabyte's Aorus Engine, but it also had a ton of additional features, including more customization via the settings interface, support for third-party cards, RGB customization, and the ability to control just about every aspect of your graphics card. So, as for features, we felt that MSI Afterburner certainly wins when it comes to features and customization. So in conclusion, we agree that MSI Afterburner and Gigabyte's Aorus Engine are both excellent applications for anyone looking to overclock their GPU. Even though Afterburner may be more reliable than the Aorus engine currently, we do anticipate that these small issues can be addressed via future updates by Gigabyte. So when considering that both apps yield the exact outcome as it relates to performance and frames per second during games, at the end of the day, it comes down to what your specific overclocking needs are when deciding between both of these excellent applications. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions regarding anything that we've discussed, 
please be sure to leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed this video or if it's helped you in any ways, please do subscribe and shoot me a thumbs up uh, as it is appreciated. If you would like more detailed information on how to use each of these specific apps to overclock your card, then head over to uh, one of my prior tutorials where I explain how to use each of these overclocking applications to overclock your card in detail. Thank you again for watching and good luck overclocking.